So I think my question is fairly traditional. You probably hear it like almost every day. So, but that's the experience I have. So I just want to spit it out. So whenever I talk to my colleagues about uh, Lua and I kind of passionately present and everything is fine, they say, okay, Leo, great, nice toy. So uh, I said, why is call it toy? Well, where are the libraries? And then I say, well, they're here and uh, you know, you can do the binding so easy. And they say, well, maybe somebody does it. I don't want to bind all my libraries myself. Maybe somebody does it for me. I said, oh, sure. There are like a couple of libraries to do uh, MD5 sums, there is uh, one, two, three libraries to do concurrent programming, like Lua lanes, Lua threads, concurrent Lua, and so on. And uh, then the question is, well, is anything standardized? So there are like uh, little sprinkles here and there. Some of them are good quality, some of them are lesser quality, some play nicely together, some don't. And there is very little official guidance, uh, like uh, official ecosystem, which sort of covers those libraries. And usually at that point, I kind of shut up, pick my marbles and go home. Because it's really very hard to argue with those people uh, for whom kind of coherent support for libraries is very important. Uh, well, what are your thoughts about it? I, I have several thoughts about that. One is that if you really need that lots of libraries, you better use another language. So I don't claim Lua to be the best language for everything. I don't want to, to convince anyone that Lua. I think that thing about a toy language is very funny because it's just because it's not for their particular use. So I think it's a kind of a aggressive way to refer to a language that did not meet their specific needs. I could call the other languages toy language because you cannot run them inside the uh, microcontroller or something small. They, those are toy languages because they are just they are just playing of adding things and adding things. So I think each language has a specific niche. And the niche of Lua is not to be a complete language of all kinds of li libraries already ready to use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, it's good to have good libraries, but it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to organize that, to have this, and, and, and so this is not a priority for Lua. Thank you. Uh, this maybe is also a common question, but so I hope you'll forgive me if you think it's obnoxious, but uh, have you any thoughts on the arithmetic assignment operators, like the plus equals, minus equals? Uh, I know there was a patch posted to the list some time ago. Yeah, I think for they, I don't think they are, they are nice, but I don't think they are that useful. And there are some problems with semantics, for instance, about meta, tab meta methods, whether they would call all meta methods or so there would be different meta methods for these operations. And they do not fit well with multiple assignment. Would we have multiple operation assignments, for instance, A, B, C plus equal three, four, five, or something like that? So I think it's. Uh, I don't think they fit well with, with Lua, but, but it's a, a taste. I mean, it's, 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 as you said, it's very easy to add them, but there are some details that must be, must be resolved before we... Well, semantic details aside, uh, wouldn't you agree, though, that it's... A, it's a use case or a pattern that comes up very often. You would, yes. If you, if I could be greedy, since I have the mic, and ask one more: Do you have any thoughts on uh, bifurcation or any any kind of a separation that is occurring between Lua JIT and proper Lua, as far as? Uh, yes, yes, I have. I am a little concerned with that. Yeah. I think the main problem is uh, the FFI because it's something that it's very difficult to do. In, it's, it's nice, it's very, very nice in, in Luajit, but it's almost impossible to do in Lua. It's completely non-portable. There is no way to do that in C. 
So we need, so, and it's a nightmare to do that for all different platforms. It's against the, the, one of the main ideas of Lua to be really portable. So, and this, I think this is one of the main breaking points. I mean, every, every program that uses FFY becomes incompatible with standard Lua. So Lua JIT is parting is from the stock Lua. So it is becoming a different language. And do you have any ideas about how to address that problem? No. <laughs> thank you. Roberto, thank you very much for being here. Um, I'm right here to your left. Oh, sorry. Hi. Is there any interest in completing uh, just-in-time compilation for LPEG patterns, or should somebody produce, or pursue that on the side? I think it'd be interesting. Again, it's a major effort to do that for several platforms, to, but it's much more easier than, than for Lua. That I think it would be interesting. And I'm not sure how useful it is, how many people really need that, that improvement in performance. But so I. I I'm, I'm not sure about the, 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 whether it, it would pay the effort. But, but it would be interesting. It's something that is simple. It's not very difficult. And, it's a, and for sure, it, you get a good performance improvement. OK, thank you. OK, so I have a question about the memory fragmentation. Oh. So. Uh, did you think, or how could it be done to make it, uh, to help with the memory fragmentation from a Lua point of view? Because as far as it works now, as I understand, uh, you simply, I mean, Lua is allocating memory and it's up mm. to a locator to do it properly. Uh, but what about some techniques like uh, kind of moving of blocks that are already allocated, like in the spare time or... Uh, to just compact the memory now and then during the garbage collection or something like that. This is very, this would change the whole idea of Lua, of this abstract, because exactly if, if you want to do that, you cannot use malloc and free anymore. So you have to have a much lower level control over the mem memory. So this would be a really big change in Lua. Once I read, but I'm not sure if this is a very good PhD thesis claiming that memory fragmentation is mainly a problem of good or bad allocators. And, but I, and it's saying that if you use a real good allocator, you usually have a much lower problem of memory fragmentation than people claim in the but I'm not sure if it's... I mean, that very much depends how much memory you have. Because, for example, I often see something like blocks of 64 kilobytes that are located. Oh, yes. And, and, you know, for me, they are quite big. Yes. And then they go away. But there are, like, mm -hmm. spikes. Uh, for example, the growing of tables, uh, when they are big, it mm. takes a lot of memory. Yes, but then... I'm not sure. But do you know whether you really have... The, the, the problem is fragmentation or is it just... You don't have memory. It's usual. I mean, total free memory is quite high, but I have a lot of uh, very small blocks. So, so that's uh, I was showing yeah. this uh, heap uh, info. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually having a list of all the blocks that are used that are free, and there is never a situation that we don't have memory. We just have mm -hmm. a bunch of useless fragments all over the place, yeah, and they are very very small. So, if if for example there could be like yeah, but exactly, that would require a dedicated allocator, mm -hmm. uh, which would, would have a list of small holes to fill. Just uh, how much uh, memory you have, I mean, proportional to the total of memory. Uh, so total memory we have is like 4 megabytes, uh, and when we see problems, it's around 800 kilobytes that left, and then it's like going over. 800 kilobytes left in 400. In, in very, very small four, chunks. Yeah, but in 4 megabytes. Yeah. There it's 20% or 
that it's so, so this is something that hurts. Yeah, but it's hard to get that 20%. <laughs> because unless, as I say, you could try a complete moving collector, but then it would be a nightmare, your API with C. I mean, you imagine all your user data moving around, and then you can try You can try to, that idea of you can have some data fixed and some other moving, but then again you, you have fragmentation because you have, you have to share the memory and sometimes you need memory in the moving part and you, you only have memory in the fixed part or you need memory in the fixed part, you only have memory. So, so actually so what happens in our system, I we have those multiple VMs, so they, if, we, if the garbage collection is slower, they slowly grow then they do garbage collection, but because we have like 20 of those VMs, mm -hmm. there are like holes in, in those spaces. So mm -hmm. again, they start to grow and fill those holes and it's just killing the space. Yeah, but I, I, I think it's very hard to, to, it's really, I think in any system that I know with, uh, with even with manual memory allocation, you always have some waste to to get better than 80% of the memory, I think it's, it's really hard. For instance, move, typical moving allocators, they typically, I, 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 I'm talking nonsense. Because I, if you have a moving allocator, they, they typically use 50% of the memory because they fill 50% and then they, they need another 50 to move. The, so if you have a moving collector in four megabytes, you're, you start with two megabytes. Maybe it's the 80%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's the, you must get used that your memory is 3.2 <laughs> megabytes. This is, uh, it's, it, it's really very high already because usually 60% or is a, anything more than half, it's, it's good. As I say, for instance, I'm a, a moving collector, it just, half your memory and say, oh, it's good because I, I guarantee that you can use half your memory all the time. Thank you. This is one from uh, the Lua list. Roberto, could you please Tell us how to pronounce your last name. Learn us how to pronounce your last name. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, because I am not an expert. I mean, I, <laughs> I assume everybody noticed that my last name is not very Brazilian and not very Portuguese. So it's my grandparents came from, well, they said they came from Russia, currently it's Ukraine, where they came from, and they, they, they had a passport with the name written in Cyrillic alphabet, and some guy in the immigration, some officer in the immigration wrote that way, and then we started pronouncing more or less like it's written, but I have no idea if this is the correct pronunciation from the, my ancestors, but anyway, I pronounce Jerusalemsky. It's more or less like it's written if you get uh, typical Latin vowels like Yerusalemsky. That's actually yeah. it could be a Polish. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, Yerusalemsky. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, could be Polish too, but it, 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 uh, maybe their ancestor came from Polish too. I, I mean, after you told that, yeah. it's actually quite easy for me. Well, no, see, so you must ask him how to pronounce my name. And obviously it can be also Russian. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more or less the same, right? But you pronounce it from M or an N? It's Jerusalemsky or Jerusalemsky? With an M, like Maria. All sorts. In Russian it would be also with M. Oh, it's not Ninsky? Oh, oh, Limsky is so good, so, so it's okay. So I know how to pronounce my name. So, <laughs> so first of all, thank you 
for developing Lua to the point that it's at now, and you know we all get a lot, a lot out of it. So I just wanted to say thank you for that, and also thank you for VeriSign for hosting us here. Um, my question was, are there any sort of language features that you've wanting to be, to add to Lua in the past or in the future? Um, maybe far off things that um, you've been thinking about that go beyond what you were talking about yesterday. Well, one uh, the, 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 one of those things on impossible golden dreams dreams is a macro system, but this is we have been thinking for a long time. It's very very hard to come with a good solution. Because even I mean even in the small is already a hard, but you can get in the large. I mean, how do you have libraries of macros? How do you import them? When do you import them, et cetera? I think it's, uh, it's really, there is a lot of problems. And there is also one problem that is seldom mentioned, but I think it's something that happens, for instance, with Lisp, that I think macros are also, it's a little dangerous because it fragments the, the, the community a lot because even in, I mean, if you have strange libraries and a lot of different stuff very particular to your application, usually you can understand, I mean, you can parse a program. When you start using macros, then you cannot, even, I mean, it's possible that you get a program in Lua and just makes completely no sense. Then people start using heavily some particular set of macros, then they suddenly they are writing programs that nobody else understands, and so you get uh, very, so there are some problems with macros, but, but really I don't know how to, to do a good system, that's because there is very different kinds of problems that everybody says, oh, a macro system would be great, but if you think in the details, they are very different kinds of macro systems. Some operate on the character level, others operate on the token level, others need to operate in the syntax level. And so it's very, di I, very difficult to find a, one that solves all those problems in all those levels. And so, but would be great too. Thank you. Hi. Um, since your, your name appeared in the paper, I'd like to know what happened with uh, Lua Proc. Did that uh, project uh, evolve or was just... Uh... That again, we need some students. Some <laughs> students <laughs> he went to do something else. But we are trying to, to get that. Yeah, I think it's uh, something really interesting. I... But it's, and, and I think the, the, the implementation of Lua Proc, I, I think it's a, a very good uh, vindication, is that you say, for what I say about multi threading, that it's very, very hard to implement something like that in the bottom. So people don't have to worry about that, <laughs> using it, but to implement that is really. So it, in the, 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 the current implementation, we found some strange bugs in the, the, those very typical bugs of concurrency in those very specific situations. Sometimes some strange thing has, things happen, and it's hard to find people that really can track those bugs. And uh, I mean, but that is something that I I really interested. I'd like to have more time to and more students. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, we can do one more from the list. Sure. Um, what would convince you guys to move the development of Lua into a uh, public uh, repository, GitHub, something like that? That's a good question. What would convince us? Just if we gain anything from it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take much. Just, go, just give good arguments for us to move to it. We already discussed that once in the list. One of the problems 
for us is that we have this, uh, this thing that we like to expose ideas more or less ready or well thought and well explained. I think it's very hard to, one of the uh, problems I have discussing things that people do not understand what you are proposing and they just start uh, attacking or proposing other things without really understanding what is going on. <clears throat> so we try to, when we do have any proposal, to have a clear idea what is we are proposing, what are the options and things like that. And sometimes we prefer to test some ideas on the code exactly to see whether it's viable, whether, whether it's reasonable to do that. And if it's in a public repository, that will be a lot of noise in the, the, uh, because people, oh, you are trying that, and what is that? And, and then a lot of explanations. I mean, uh, it would be impossible to say, don't, I mean, ignore that, and just I will explain two weeks later when I, or I may, maybe two weeks later, I will delete that, and it never existed. So we prefer to, but the, we already said that anyone that wants a, a copy of uh, a reasonably ver recent version of Lua, we can just release that. But to have it public all the time for all small changes we do, we try, oh, let's try that, and then save in the repository. Oh, what are you trying to do? What is that? That is, is it, and all that. It's, I think it's, and as I say, I do not see any gains in, in, in general. I think these working versions work fine when we do have something more or less ready then can expose and then people reply and then find things. Yesterday you were talking, well, the question was asked about what you would like to see, and one of the things you mentioned was a static type system. Mm -hmm. do you, can you talk about what you are thinking about, like not in terms of, just in terms of things that have occurred to you or what you might like to see or how you might like to go about it? I know that you mentioned it's going to take, you know, three PhD students yes, that you currently the, don't have. <laughs> yeah, the problem with type systems is exactly that for now I think it's a, a it's very research stuff I, because exactly I have no idea whether it would be reasonable to have or whether we could have or it would be good to have just type annotations or type inference. What would be, we have no idea what would be types, uh, what, what is a type in Lua. We don't want to type a number table. That's not, you want, this is a list of integers. This is a function that receives that arguments and return that kind of argument. So, you really need a, a like a type good, algebra. Uh, uh, yes, exactly a type algebra. And then, of course, because Lua, it's very common. For instance, this argument can be an integer or a string. Your type type algebra should have things like unions and all kinds of operations. And so, for me, just just to have a good type language for Lua would be a, a big project. And then we can think, okay, now how do you type a program? And then the problem with the API, because we can have type systems that ensure the type, they just assume the type, and, and it's your problem, it's you do not follow the type. And so what to do with the type, again, uh, there is a lot of. So this is an idea that unlike macros, that we more or less know what we would like, we just don't know how to do it. A type system, even what we, it's, it said that's very oh I'd like to I'd like the program to solve my all my problems but we don't know how to <laughs> yeah, because I love type systems I mean they are really very it's the the as uh, Peyton John said once it's uh, the most useful and practical verif uh, static verification tool that we have nowadays everybody uses it's very useful, very easy to understand, and it, it proves a lot of things about your programs. It's really a fantastic tool, but it, how to, I think that would be a really real breakthrough to, Thank you. to put that in a dynamic language. Uh, a really quick question. So since Lua 5.2 doesn't mean a quick answer, does it? Uh, I think <laughs> I'm thinking the answer will be negative and quick. <laughs> so Lua 5.2 introduced uh, the labels, which are very powerful. Can then we have, uh, so since there are jumps, I mean, um, can we have our continue statement? You don't need it anymore. 
you just so, put a label, continue, go to continue. Thank you very much for a quick negative answer. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good enough? That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon? <laughs> I had a question about sandboxing, and it, it's somewhat related to what Eric said. Somebody can set something in the global table to nil. So if I have two customers, what's the, what are the constructs that I need to make reusing that VM the safest and the cheapest? Something very cool. It depends. You have... Um, just uh, trusted customers that can make mistakes or you have bad persons as customers? Uh, it would just be mistakes, right? Somebody it's, makes an error. Yeah, if it's only mistakes, I think you can do that, that tricks you have to protect. I mean, you remove a lot of stuff from a lot of functions that are usually people should not use in any way. Well, depends the kind of things they need to do, but for instance, mostly would they need to do set, uh, set meta table or don't, don't they need? And probably you should, I always recommend you instead of seeing the functions that you have to remove, you should check the functions that you have to offer. So you get the library, standard libraries and see the users, you need that function, okay, that function, oh, they, they, so remove as much as possible. Use those tricks of, of uh, to catch changes in, in tables, and probably would be a good idea. But I don't. I really don't remember how much expensive it is to copy again the the, the, the libraries to just to erase everything and to copy again the libraries, or just try to to avoid the. the they change the, the tables and but it's so but it's not really easy. Sometimes it's cheaper to open a new it's very cheap to open new states. What is really expensive is to open libraries, but then we can use the, the that standard method of of pre-registering the libraries and they you only really open the library if you, the user requires them. You know? Yeah, so because open, creating a new state is it's maybe it's cheaper than anything else that you can do to try to clean the state, or to, to keep it clean. I, I would try that first. If there is problems, then I could think about because it's really very fast to. I mean, it's fast to open a new state, or it's fast to recopy the library addresses each time. For example, somebody hits the string table, sets the string table to nil. I want to protect against those kinds of things. Yes, yes, that, that, that's what I mean. I mean, to open a new state is is very cheap. What is expensive? is to open the libraries in the new state. So if you, that idea I gave before, they like to recopy the libraries, that maybe would be more expensive than creating a new state, a new empty state. And then opening only the libraries that the user really needs. So if required, the user requires. I need the string library, okay, so you open the limerick string library. The user doesn't need the math library. You don't have to open the math library. So, but again, that depends. If all users or most users use most of the libraries, then it becomes expensive to create new states. But if most users write small scripts using the string library, or then it can be much cheaper to just create new states all the time. Of course, you have to measure, but I think it's a, a quite a reasonable approach to to be tried at least. What we did was there's a read-only patch. I don't know if you've found that. There's actually a couple, two of them, but there's a read-only patch. It's a patch, of course. Sorry, but yeah. <laughs> there's a read-only patch. You can lock all the global tables, and they can't change those. They could access the functions all day long, access variables, whatever. 
but they can't modify yeah. them. It's a very small patch. It's yeah. just a few lines. Yeah, actually, this is something we are thinking about. Of, this is a small change we are thinking about introducing in Lua, whatever the number, <laughs> five three probably, is a, a kind of new index meta method that is called all the time that you you try to write in a table even when the key is present. So it becomes almost immediately to write to create read-only tables. And then it becomes more easy to protect the, your, because then the, the, he can erase the, the, the string library, but then you just copy. You know that this string library itself, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the original one. So just copy it again to the, so it's just five or six, or I don't know, 10 global verbs that you have to copy them. It's, you don't have to do a deep copy. So that would be quite doable. A question, a question and a comment. The comment was that when you were saying about the repository not being public, uh, when I was trying to learn about the underscore M uh, addition to 5.2, happened on the list and I saw that kind of unfold and I really liked it. You had a fully thought out plan, there was a discussion, a better solution came out of it. There was not a lot of ranting and I just observed, you know, I kind of connected that to what you were saying as a verification of it. But um, my quick question is, what are your thoughts on a const or, you know, the ability to say string library, you know, to if you were to be able to declare the string library as a constant that couldn't be set to nil? Um, but and that would have other uses, of course. Is in I think the the the, the um, uh, right meta method uh, would be more generic, and would be would make that uh, uh, a what? Uh, uh, oh, a meta method. Okay, a meta okay. method. With but uh, as I, I just mentioned, that a new index, but it's a uh, set index mm -hmm. meta method that it's called every time you try to set an index. So. You could do easily a read-only table, just raise an error if anyone tries to set an index. Mm -hmm. But you can do a lot of others. For instance, you can do proxies without the proxy having to be an empty table to, to force a set index all the time. So mm -hmm. it would be more, more generic. Question about this uh, multi-state uh, things. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, how generally important is it to people? I mean, this is like a side effect uh, of the thing it uses standard allocator. Uh, I mean, specifically, sorry, I'm, I'm, pardon, pardon you. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you develop the Lua, mm -hmm. uh, how important is optimization of the multiple states in parallel? Because one thing what do you that mean optimization. Of uh, okay, so so the thing, for for example, that uh, we observe. Uh, if we have multiple states and mm -hmm. the multiple states load the same libraries, uh, mm -hmm. we actually waste a lot of memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so many, many years ago, I was uh, doing some hacking on the Newton script and the Apple Newton thing. Mm -hmm. And they, had, uh, they also had like a multi-VM, but it was hidden from the user. Mm -hmm. But one concept uh, they had, it was called magic, magic pointers. So the magic pointers were like tables that were essentially uh, read-only and they were like outside of the VM, so they could be shared by different VMs. Would it be possible to implement something like that in Lua? Like, well, it depends on your concept of possible. Uh, of course, I mean, <laughs> I know everything is possible, but yes. uh, does it mix well with the internals, no, or it no, would be there terrible? Is a, there, is two, there is two main problems. One, of course, is garbage collection because the states have independent garbage collections. So once you have pointers from one to the other, it becomes a mess, the, the garbage collector. And the second one, more subtle one, is this, the, the thing that strings are internalized. And so you have a string in one state and I have a string in another state. And so now the comparison of, of strings, they are not equal anymore, even if they are equal, because they are not internalized together. So. I think that would, it would be something interesting, but I think it would be a, a, a big project. Because from the garbage collector perspective, it should work like if it's a magic pointer, it's not fallout. So it's like outside. So the yeah, assumption but the problem if it, is the other garbage collector. It, 
And the other would also not follow it. That would be like something f not in one state, not in the other state. It would be something like a meta state. I don't know how oh, it, to call outside it. Outside both. States. Yeah. Also, no VM would own it. Mm -hmm. It would be just allocated and never deallocated. I think then the, the main. I think the main problem would be strings. This problem of internal, internal internalizing of strings. This would be a, 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 a big problem. But would, would that be something you would be interested in having done, or with the PhD students, or something? We can also get some PhD students. Oh, that students. would be interesting. Yeah, that could be okay, very so interesting. Okay, I will get back. Yeah, to you. yeah. because th this is really very uh, uh, an interesting problem. But again, you have to measure how frequently you need to open all libraries in all states. It's not all, but if I open, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, so... The string uh, library. St st string, no, to, to, I mean Lua libraries are oh, quite okay. big. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I open a MIME or HTTP or mm -hmm. Socket, okay. and that things open a few mm -hmm. more, I mean, opening uh, HTTP uh, takes instantly like 150 kilobytes. Mm -hmm. So, it, so the memory usage in a VM goes from 50 kilobytes to 100. One thing that 100. you should, I mean, but that would be for your particular case, but can be generalized later, is that some parts of the code are, are very easy to, to, to share. For instance, the opcode of a, of a Lua function. Because this is just a, a string of numbers and it's completely read only it, it doesn't have strings embedded there is also this is very easy to to have that kind of thing you mentioned a pointer to outside so it, it, and just the garbage collector ignores that and so if this is a big part of your of of yeah. the library then you can just you can repeat the the tables the, the, the table string you repeat them and just when you you get to the real functions the main part the bulk part of, of each function is shared so that, that is very much, much, much easier. But again, it's much, much more particular because it's useful if you have some big functions or if you have a lots of small functions, you, you are saving mm -hmm. very little. So that would be much easier. <laughs> Even, no problem, yeah, because once you get yes, uh, function prototypes, the whole prototype of the function, mm -hmm. It has the opcodes that it's easy to share. It has some in, uh, debug information that it's not so easy to share. But then you have the constants, and then you have pointers to strings, and then you have the problems of, of strings. Yeah, it could work, for example, like, uh, I don't know exactly how that works in Lua. I didn't get that down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, the library is probably loaded by something like load chunk or, or something. So to have yeah, a any kind of load. Yeah, yeah. So to have a flag for that uh, to say that and the result should be shared and then any other VM that would uh, call the function with the shareable result uh, would, I don't know, even compare if that chunk yeah, was ever yeah, instance, loaded yeah, before. Instance, you could have some external repository of those stuff and use some hash to... to yeah, and some, so having something like something that's above the state yes. that would keep the... I don't know, even a Lua table of all the chunks that were loaded before it was yeah, it yeah, would never be simply state, garbage yes, collected yes yeah something like that but you could when you're load mainly if you're loading a binary chunk that would be much much easier you could just see i oh, i have to load that check if there is that already a copy and then use that mm -hmm. copy so. like, trying to visualize this here don't coroutines already allow a lot of state sharing Yes, but then coroutines do not allow uh, multiple CPUs. Yeah. yeah but I, know, I don't know if you have, do have multiple CPUs. Because the, otherwise, you, but then, yeah, that could be a, an idea to use just coroutines and to do the reverse instead of multiple states to have, a, wouldn't that be... Yes, but we do many, many things in parallel, and with coroutines, it's too much of 
doing coordinate. I mean, we have priorities, things like stuff. Oh, there, okay. there, um, we have 20 virtual machines. Some of them have mm -hmm. hundreds of coroutines. And if you put all of that in one yeah. bag, it's just impossible to manage. To, to so, coordinate, I mean, to give proper priorities, etc. So, so we remember about coroutines. Mm -hmm. They are very nice, but not always. Okay. No, I, I, I agree. Questions? No. Eric, anything from the list? Um, Just why Lua doesn't have X? <laughs> <laughs> by one and by zero, this is one I love. This I can discuss all night. <laughs> I always start with reason zero. <laughs> 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 I was wondering if you uh, had any insight into how Lua could become more popular. Um, maybe not to the extent that something like JavaScript is, but do you have any insight into making Lua more popular, a bigger community? Mm. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. No, it, it's good. It's, it's good. Not too much popular, but it's good to be reasonable popular. It's, it helps me. It helps me. So another question. I was not aware that the Lua JIT is using a different uh, bytecodes uh, mm -hmm. in the compiled chunks. Uh, so do you know how it compares to standard VM to the Lua JIT without JIT? Uh, is it like comparable or? You, what, comparable what? Uh, Performance-wise. No, Logit is much more efficient because it, it's, it's all in machine language and it, it, yes, but uh, as a, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if it works like that. But it also has a different uh, virtual machine, and you can actually disable JIT. For example, yes, for yes, yes. But that's what I mean. That the interpreter is written in machine code. Ah, it's okay. not written in C. Okay. And so there is two things that it's it really may. I mean, we we grew. Accustomed with the overhead of C, and everybody thinks so. C it's like uh, machine language. It's not. I mean, not for. Of course, you need someone like Mike Paul to to explore that because it's really insane to keep a, 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 a something of any reasonable size written in assembler and efficient. So the, the problem is that assembler can can be much more efficient than C, but it needs a lot of effort in each single thing that you do in, in assembly. And the, the second thing that is connected to this one is that the, 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 once it's in machine code, it's all fixes for one particular architecture. Lua has a lot of inefficiency because it must work with all with NCC. Sometimes we do use some if, if def tricks for something that's really inefficient in some machines. And then we do some special optimizations, but it's very, very uncommon. And when you are doing machine code for one specific machine, then you can explore all those possibilities. And so it's so the 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 the, the Luigit even interpreter is almost twice or I think it's twice faster is than than Lua. But is it also a uh, few things I read? It's that it has uh, different bytecodes, like more of them, so it's actually less bytecodes to interpret. Isn't this something that might be actually interesting no, to put back to to this standard Lua? Let's say if it's only that that make no, can I make some performance no, improvement, I, or it's not it possible. May be, it may maybe it can make some improvements. This is something that it's very difficult to. Because there are some trade-offs, because if you start putting too many opcodes, then the interpreter, interpreter gets big, and then you start to lose cache. Uh, you start to get cache misses in the, 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 the main cache, because you have the, uh, the, so the trades offer. And again, once you have, oh, I'm doing for that machine, there it's more mm -hmm. easy, and mainly if you know all that stuff. That <laughs> but. But it might be uh, Lua has space for some more. Sometimes there are some opcodes that do some 
internal tests that could be avoided if you have different opcodes for, for some different things. It's uh, something that we have to, to measure. But I don't, know, I don't think the difference would be, would be big. Maybe it could be 10% in some programs. Mm -hmm. but I don't think that's the, the, the main problem. Um, have you personally used the FFI? The what? Have you personally used the FFI at all? The FFI? Foreign function interface. No, not no. Uh, okay, so I was wondering if there's any chance we'd see something like that supported more officially, although it is very platform specific, it's intensely useful. Yes, but... Okay, so that's no. Um, so, the... <laughs> yes, right. I, I do not understand the question. What is the... Um, the FFI is very, very useful. I was hoping to see any other... Effort. Yes, it is very... I, 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 I mentioned that as some in the beginning here. It is really very, very useful, but I, I have, there is no way to implement that in, in C. Well, it's sort of just the low-level sort of... You mentioned the struct library before. Um, using the FFI to access native types is sort of... Rather than using the, a struct packing library, it seems to be more general. Again, I think the gains you gain, then there, there is two different things. There is one thing is the FFI as a way to access Next external types. stuff. And that is undo, I mean, you cannot do that in C. C does not have any way, it's invalid in C to call a function with the wrong number of parameters, for instance. So, if you want to have a generic way to call functions with one, two, three, four, five, six arguments, you must have a switch with all kinds of number of arguments, all kinds of kinds, types of arguments. And then if I'm calling a function with one integer argument, I go here. If I want to calling a function with a string and an integer argument, I go there. It's the only way to do that in, in C. So there is, this is completely undoable. The FFIS data structure, then <clears throat> not to access C code, then I think, it's, as I said, it's very nice, but it's completely different from what we have in mind for Lua, that it's, the, 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 it's tables for everywhere, for everything. Tables should be efficient enough. But, and again, I don't think we can do anything very efficient in, uh, in interpreted mode without, uh, a, I mean, in generic ways that, uh, like Lua is implemented. That won't be, a, of course, it could be a very big gain in memory use, for instance. That's, just, that's but that, that's very easy to have a extra library, like a integer arrays, for instance, if there is that in, in the Lua book, you have specific uh, arrays, for instance, for integers and things like that. But otherwise, uh, the, 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 the CPU cost is very high to, to a generic access to a structure with a generic description. So. Right, cool, and a completely different question. Um, there was talk back before 5.2 came out of some way to have tuples so that you can expand an argument list at the start of a table constructor. Do you... Do you Happen to remember that. Um, so it ended up in a patch being created by someone which had a tuple and a detuple opcode. Does anyone remember that one? Triple. Tuple or tuple. T tuple. Tuple. Yeah. I might say things wrong. I don't know. No, no, no. no. Uh, so, so there was a patch created. I can't remember who it was by. Um, but it was essentially allowed for table uh, concatenation efficiently. Uh, as well as being able to sort of um, a multi return function call uh, at the start of a table constructor and have everything filled in. And it was, um, I believe it was, people said no because they found it unintuitive um, that like, if you put a G sub in a table constructor, you'd get the second argument back. Um, and I was hoping to see in maybe 5.3 or whatever the next version is that revisited. I, which part of the question didn't you understand? <laughs> No part, sorry. I, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, <laughs> then, um, so in, in a table constructor, if in you, a table constructor, if you have, um, say, two function calls, 
Two function calls, yes. And the first function... Oh, yeah, yeah no, no, I, 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 you, you want to expand the first one to... to yes. To, to all arguments and... and that's, that's one application yes. oh, of... Oh, yes. Well, I have personal problems with that. I think that would be very confusing. And it's very... The, the implementation, I mean, to have a variable number, I think it's confusing. We could have some people suggest like a syntax to say I want that many results from that function. I am not sure how useful is that or that could be something like uh, I want that function with that many arguments here. But I'm not sure if this is something really I just remember a few other applications of it, such as um, apparently inside the VM uh, it's actually possible, but just syntactically it's currently not. Uh, the fact that you could sort of essentially concatenate two tables together. Um, so sort of unpack table one, unpack table two, and chuck it in a table constructor or something like that. If it fits in the stack you still have the limitation that you, you can do that for small tables, that usually it's, it's not when you are concerned about performance. So if you have small tables, just do two loops. If you have a big table, you cannot do that because it doesn't fit in the stack. If, if you had a big table, could you just like unpack n on two, unpack n on two, two? Yes, but exactly, you cannot unpack uh, 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 oh, right, because, yeah. that many elements, there is some limits of how many. Inside a particular Lua function, exactly, if you are not passing that to any other stuff, you cannot unpack anything with more than 250, 250 elements. Because once you get that, that many elements in the stack, you are not able to call another unpack because you cannot do anything more. So actually, you cannot do that in the current VM. Are there any features from any other languages post, uh, you know, current or in the past that you would like to think about putting in the Lua, not necessarily, you know, just as experiments to play with in the context? The reason I ask the question as a kind of open-ended question is because one feature that I like from an, a language called Icon is this idea of goal-directed execution. Um, Icon is a language derived from Snowball, and it basically has a concept, if people aren't familiar with it. I love is, Icon. Has anybody else used or heard of Icon or Unicon? I, I, I never use I use Smalltalk a lot. Uh, uh, Snowball. Snowball, yeah. A lot. So goal-directed execution. Many years ago, and I, I read a lot about Icon. I never use it. Anymore. So goal-directed execution is interesting. Unlike most languages where you would say something like if A less than B and then test for Boolean truth values or 1 or 0 or return codes, uh, Icon's concept of goal-directed execution just has a notion of success or failure. So computation continues until something succeeds or fails. And backtracks. Uh, does Icon backtrack? Pardon? Does Icon backtrack? Yes, if it, a lot. Yeah, if, yes. yeah, if it reaches yes, failure, that's, it goes that, back that's next. the interesting part is that almost all operations are, are lift to, to a kind of to a coroutine level. Yeah. And so it tries something, it fails, then it tries again with uh, a generator, this, essentially. Yes, with, yeah. Yeah, everything is generators and, and pass those generators. Uh, but are there any any things like like I mean I'm, I'm using that particular example, but is there anything like that um, from any other language that you might like to see? I think it's different. For instance, this in Icon, I, I think it's, uh, I love that. I think Icon is a very nice language, but I think this is the core of the language. I mean, it's, uh, it's not, this is not a, a feature. This is the language. I mean, the, the whole language was thought around this concept. I don't think we can get this out of Icon and put in, in a, Coroutines was a, a a way to amel ameliorate this, ameliorate, uh, whatever, to... <laughs> so, R Roberto, um, uh, in, um, at least in Lua 5.1, uh, package loaders are very kind of simple and understandable concept, except for one corner case, 
when a file name has a dash in it, there is some really weird way how this uh, versioning of the files. And, mm -hmm. then, and um, I think I read in the list that uh, at some point you want to just simply drop it because it makes no, no, not much sense. Like a full dash five, and uh, then they you know in, the in way. The require? Yeah, in yeah, uh, yeah. in in, in requires. So yeah. the idea was to support multiple versions of the same uh, SO yeah, library, yeah. but the uh, the way how it looks. Yeah, some th I think that's a very weird thing, and I always want to drop it. But then suddenly I, I need it. I frequently need that, and then I decide that it's not a good good idea to drop it. So it, it will stay. Probably, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, the, the, the problem what, no, the, the problem is that what I wanted to do is that I think the iPhone is no I, now I remember there is some problems because there was one problem is that the iPhone is before the, the this is the problem this is something that is weird because the iPhone is before the name it's not after mm -hmm. if it were after the name then it would be just like a, Something is the usual way to put version information. So the name is like v 3 dash full yes, dot exactly. s o. Yes. So version but, precedes yes, the name. But then I cannot remember now. But there is a big problem to put the dash at the end. So I think it's basically once I thought, oh, that's perfect. Just put the dash at the end. It's obvious why I didn't that do that. And then when I started to think, oh, I know why I didn't. But now I don't. But but there is some there is some very good reason to not put the dash at the end that I don't remember now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Roberto, could you elaborate a bit more on what you said yesterday about the the ellipses uh, functions with multiple arguments? Uh, you. You are not uh, happy with the Lua having supporting uh, those kind of functions, or you're not happy with uh, the implementation of that feature? Um, they are both connected, I think, because the, 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 the main idea of the three dots is that you do not allocate memory for the three dots. So it's strongly connected with the, the implementation. And so the three dots is not a first class citizen. The three dots is something that you can only use in very specific situations because you are kind of abusing the stack. Mm -hmm. so, so more or less, that's the, the, the general idea. That, that is what it's good about the three dots because, oh, I can implement three dots very easily, create a table in the back and do everything with the table. But then that's not what people want. So the implementation is strongly related to the, you understand? The, yes, but um, do, do you encourage the, the kind of uh, code that you can write using that? I mean, wrapping functions, composing? What I don't like is exactly because it is a second class citizen. And it's very clear there is only some very specific things you can do with that. There is other thing you cannot do. But then people start to compare that with other things where you cannot use that. Mm -hmm. And then you, 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 you start to have a different standard because you assume that once I can do that without allocating memory, why can't I do everything else without allocating memory? That's, what, that's what, what I said yesterday. Then suddenly creating a table becomes a scene. Now, I cannot create tables. It's, and, and so this is the, 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 what, what, I, what I meant. I mean, some things in the language do not match well with the idea of the language. People start to, to expect other things from the language, and they are not doable, and so it's sometimes it's better not to have them and to make it clear. If you want an aggregate, you create a table. That's the way to have aggregates in Lua. So, because it's like the three dots, is, I think that this that you mentioned about the implementation or this, I think that's exactly 
the point. The three dots is something that was born from the implementation. It's something like, oh, there is a way to implement that uh, so put in the language. And then it's, it's, it's extremely connected with that particular implementation. You cannot change almost anything because it works there, but it doesn't, there is no other way to implement. There is no way to extend that. To, I mean, there is ways to extend, but then it's inefficient. It's not what people want. And so it's, um, it's not usually a good idea. Or maybe not. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>